Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm. And today I want to tell you how I truly, really, honestly feel about this hoop house that I purchased last fall and this is my first spring season using it. Here's how I really feel. I absolutely love it. I want 10 more. <laughs> I, know, I know you guys knew that I was gonna say that I loved it, um, but I just don't know how I can stress the fact that the plants that are currently growing in here have surpassed in quality, height, and bloom time far superior to anything that I've grown in the field. And that's not to say that flowers grown in the field are not fantastic because I still will grow probably the vast majority of my flowers in the field for years to come. But I cannot get over how successful this hoop house has allowed my spring season to be. So before I give you guys a little bit of a tour of what's growing here in the hoop house, I wanted to mention a couple of things. I was just recently a guest on Lisa Mason Ziegler's podcast. I'll put that in the description below. And guys, Dave Dowling's perennial and bulb course, it's open today only today's the last day i told you guys about it a few days ago that it was opening up and today is the day that it closes there's also an affiliate link in the description of this video for you guys to check out dave's course i want to tell you a couple things about dave's course and i've talked about this before i've talked about it I've t i think it was three years ago that i took dave's course and uh, i credit the success that i'm having this season to Dave Dowling and his knowledge that he shared in his course. And you know, just the fact that he is still there for his students years later. If I have a question, uh, he answers it. If, if he doesn't know the answer, he finds somebody who does. And his course goes over how to flower farm with bulbs and perennials. And it's like, I coined the phrase, having Dave Dowling in your back pocket. He's a cut flower guru. He was in the industry growing and selling cut flowers for more than two decades. And now he's currently a representative representative for a huge wholesaler and he is just the guy he's the cut flower king let's just call it what it is he's the cut flower king anyway I want to let you guys know that Dave's course if you are interested in taking your business to the next level it's the course that I took in order for me to do that so Dave actually uh talks about ranunculus in this course, talks about lilies, talks about tulips, talks about the profitable flowers that you can grow for your farm. So I'll be uh, talking about some of them here. And it's um, my favorite part. There were two things, three things. There are three things that I, uh, I think were my favorite part of Dave's course. And number one, the community that you are joining, becoming a part of. There is an online forum for everyone who's taking Dave's course. And uh, that was a huge bonus for me. You got a lot of meet a lot of uh, like-minded people. And you also were able to learn succession planting. I learned a lot of that from Dave. And the last one is I felt like I was taking a college course. That's what you kind of have to think of this as. You're investing in your education and taking a college course. And it's the best kind of college course though because you can revisit it and rewatch it anytime you want. And that's what's the most helpful part for me is as I'm adding perennials to the farm, all I have to do is open up the course, go to the section because it's in sections by plant. So say I need a question. Oh, I have a question about ranunculus. You go to that section, you click on it and you can listen to Dave's words of wisdom about ranunculus. So that's how the course is set up. And it's a money back guarantee. If you are not happy with the course in the first week, then you can get your money back. So anyway, I want to share that with you guys quickly, but now I want to definitely show you guys around this hoop house because I'm in love. So exciting news guys. I um, just signed up as a wholesaler. So I have a wholesale account and I am shipping out a lot of stems. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, I wanted to talk about some of the varieties that I will be growing again and some that I don't think I will grow again. And as much as it saddens me, I don't think that I'm gonna grow this flamenco again. And not because it's not beautiful, but if you don't get it at the exact right time of harvest, it sheds its pollen and it gets really dirty looking. And I just, I'm having a hard time uh, with the harvest of this one. Um, so that's why you see it so prolifically blooming right here um, because it's, it's filthy. Like it's, it's dirty. It's a dirty ranunculus. It's still beautiful. And if you work hard, you could probably clean it, but who wants to work hard when you're hardly working, if you know what I mean? Anyway, so the flamenco, as gorgeous as it is, unless you harvest it at the exact time before it opens up, before any pollinators get to it, uh, it's, 
it gets pretty dirty. The rest, I don't see that problem. It's only the flamenco and a little bit on the picote too, because the picote has a bunch of different uh, varieties. But anyway, what I will be growing again, the amandine cream, the amandine pink, the label chocolate, the amandine black. Oh, there's just so many. Ooh, the chamello. I mean, look at these. Is this chamello? Yes, this is chamello. Ugh. Look at that. I mean, that's just stunning. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, the champagne. Oh, the champagne is delicious. What else? Let me look around. Oh, um, the white, duh, the white for sure. Uh, the super greens didn't do so well. It's pretty, but it's not as super green in the middle as I suspect. But I gotta be honest with you guys, it makes a difference um, what size corm you purchase. So I tried to purchase all size five to seven corms because the larger the corms, the thicker the stem and the bigger the flower. Well, a lot of those five to seven sizes were sold out. So they were substituted with a smaller sized corm. So I think that's what happened with the super greens. I just had smaller corms and the flowers weren't as big and robust as they should have been like this. Yeah, out of all of these guys, I think the flamenco is, is the only one that I wouldn't grow again. And I think that um, I even expanded and I'm getting even more varieties for next year. I already placed my order and uh, believe it or not, I'm growing even more next year. <laughs> dangerous. Woo! The girl is so dangerous. <laughs> and here we have the poppies. Guys, I'm going to be growing so many poppies next year. It's I couldn't keep up with harvesting. But I, I've learned to tell when things just opened. Like that just opened. This one's been open for a few days. But I'm trying my best to harvest them when they are color cracking. Like that, obviously, the, when, they, when the petals fall off they're old, but I am going to be using their pods. So I'm letting them kind of go right now because I'm going to be using their pods for structure. But this is where I would normally harvest a poppy. Hello, fly. Go away. Can you see, did it focus? That's how I would normally harvest a poppy when it's not open yet but they are just beautiful. I actually had someone request a poppy bouquet for a dance recital over the weekend in memory of their poppy. And uh, it was a super emotional thing. So it was wonderful. Ooh, look at that pink one, hold on. She just opened, she's lovely. Hello, darling. This right here, guys, this is the cress that I direct seeded in here and it's about ready. Uh, cress, I like to harvest when it has formed its pods. Let's see if I can find one that's mostly formed here. Um, you look good, you look good, everything looks good. Okay, so this is an example. Is it focusing? So it has mostly these pods. It does still have a few flowers on the front and that's okay. But this is an amazing filler. Um, it can become invasive though. If you let it uh, drop seed, it will just grow everywhere. So I'm gonna be really good about harvesting it before that happens. But yeah, that's really beautiful, very popular. So down here I have my, Ren or, sorry, my Lysianthus that I started from seed. Um, this is probably about eight inches tall. Some of it is branching out, multiple stems. Wasn't expecting that. Look at this one, one, two, three stems coming from all over this. Uh, they all are branching out, almost all of them. Uh, so I wasn't expecting that. And then some of the Orlea that I direct sowed in here. Uh, I didn't think the seed was any good, but I've got about 12 of them coming up. So that's exciting. And then look, my Larkspur. I have my first Larkspur that I started from seed. I had really horrible germination, but let me um, point the camera. I don't know if it's looking at it. Yeah, so this larkspur is the very first one. Oh, look, a pollinator has found it. Yeah, so that's exciting. And then beyond that, look, there's an accidental ranunculus right there. Oops. Beyond that is the patch of anemones. Will you look, like, wait, I'll show you how tall these are. It's insane. I'm gonna step right in the middle. Um, that stem length, I'm so sorry, guys. It's incredible. It really is. 
I can't even go over how tall they are. I haven't been harvesting off of them as often as I should be just because um, I haven't. But this right here, but when people see these though, they're like, wow, because I have been adding a couple to each of the bouquets. I'm, I'm not even cutting like all the way down to the bottom. Look at that. And this happened after I put the shade cloth on. These are incredibly tall. I guess I should say long, tall. What do I say? What do you say? What do you call a flower? Uh, people are going nuts over these. They really are. Look at the stem length on you. So beyond the anemone patch is, this is the um, antique brown and then the ruby stock. They're kind of all mixed up in here. Absolutely gorgeous. The smell is amazing. Beyond that, I have the fever few and that's taller than I've ever had for fever few. I can't remember what variety this is. This might be the single variety, which is a white with a gold center. Um, that's a small patch of fever few. And then I have the snapdragon and the snapdragons are just, they're impressing me beyond. Uh, first of all, I have snapdragons. I've been harvesting them for a week. Second of all, that's a beautiful height. I mean, it's not huge. I've seen snapdragons and tunnels get this big, uh, but this is also as much as I need, I don't need anything taller than this. So it's perfect for me. These are branching out at the bottom as well. Oh, they're even taller than, um, than they seem because uh, they're a little bit twisted at the bottom. We've got these lovely snaps. I don't know, they almost look like an apple blossom. Oh, they smell so fresh. They're so good. Yeah, these are, these are wonderful. They're, they're big, they're large. I'm filthy, so sorry. Uh, but these are my snapdragons. Beyond the snapdragons, another patch of poppies. Sorry, I'm shaky right now. And then obviously I have the lilies that are growing in crates. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine crates out here now. And then beyond that is more stock. I forgot to mention first, um, this is the other fever few patch. It's also budding up, also taller and healthier looking than any any fever few that I've ever grown. Super obsessed with it. Swing the camera around here. Here's that other patch of tecalo or of flamenco. I just, you know, it gets pollinated and it sheds. And I don't want a shedding here. This is example. You see that? That's and it could be user error. It could be me, but I don't want to deal with it is basically what I'm saying. Apparently I'm not the only one a little bit in love with the stock. Okay, so here's the other side of the stock patch. And what I really was excited to tell you guys is, I didn't realize this, but the Rainbow Quartet, the Quartet series is a branching stock. Check this out. I took even a better of it with my phone, but these are all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that broke, but they are all rainbow stock and they branch. What? What? I had no idea this was a thing, but I noticed it happening. So I looked it up and sure enough, rainbow quartet is a branching stock. I always say stock is one and done, but in this case, it's most definitely not. Oh my goodness. Look at that roughly white one. Hold on a second, guys. You need to see it. What is even happening right here? Look, and this is like a baseball sized one. Look, at that ranunculus. Wow, that is phenomenal. That's beautiful. So this is my spring season. The shade cloth, I think, is helping me to extend it more than I ever thought possible. It's mid-June and I still have ranunculus that's just budding up. So definitely have a while to go here. So how do I really feel about my hoop house? Give me 10 more, that's all. <laughs> it's amazing, I'm obsessed. And I honestly, well, I have a second one. It's not put up yet, guys. 
I don't know if that's gonna happen till fall. Things are just insanely busy here around the farm. I have yet to get to a lot of projects that I really need to get done this year. So that's not really a priority until the fall because I definitely wanna grow some, like double what I'm doing right now, uh, especially with wholesale accounts. I'm gonna be able to sell the flowers immediately and that's a huge bonus for me. So anyway, guys, I really wanna get, I would say max out here, probably four tunnels just because of the, the amount of flat property that I have we'd have to do some work to the property in order to get more flat land because the rest of my flat land is taken up by peonies <laughs> and hydrangeas which they're doing awesome guys I can't wait to show you guys the progress on the hydrangeas and the other uh, perennials that I planted with the help of Dave Dowling of course and I just literally today only today's the last day you can sign up uh, I don't know if they're gonna maybe offer an extension of a couple of days if there's a lot of interest in the course but I wanted to help Dave out because Dave has helped me out tenfold it's made me a part of a community that's much bigger than what I'm doing here and to me that investment was priceless so anyway guys I just wanted to show you guys in the hoop house before I end up clearing this out which I'm guessing probably another week at least I don't know there are a lot of ranunculus still coming so I do want to put my dahlias in here not all of them obviously but I saved some uh, to put in here so I want to pull this all out and I know somebody's going to ask me if I'm going to save the corms I don't think I can save the corms because I can't afford to let them die back and I don't know if harvesting them before they've died back is going to allow them to come back the following year I just don't know I need this space for the next crop so I don't know if I'm going to be doing that but man oh man alive this poppy is gorgeous all right I have to go get some work done. I'm finishing the rest of my veggie garden and I also have to get the grow along in the ground, guys. I haven't even gotten the seedlings in the ground yet. But, I mean, believe it or not, we had a frost warning here less than 10 days ago. So it's okay for me not to have those plants in the ground yet. So if you're waiting for another update on the grow along, it's coming. So anyway, guys, thanks for sticking around. We'll see you soon. You got legs. You know how to use them.